During some recent renovations at McGill's School of Physical and Occupational Therapy, we made a few discoveries in an old building, which led to the creation of a fascinating new exhibit here at the Maud Abbott Medical Museum. The School of Physiotherapy here at McGill University started in 1943. Occupational therapy joined in 1954. It was opened in response to the marked need for rehab specialists in Canada at the time of the Second World War. McGill's School of Physical and Occupational Therapy has evolved and expanded over the 70 years, though many courses are still held in the original buildings in Montreal's Golden Square Mile. In 2013, we had a big renovation project at Hosmer House. While searching through some of the old nooks and crannies, we were surprised to find some antique machines which were key parts of PT history. We were able to curate these discoveries and create a permanent new exhibit called Sparks and Waves, the uses of electricity, light and sound in physiotherapy. It explains the principles and rationale behind the machines and also why some are no longer used. On the top shelf, we have two nice Bristol coil machines dating from the 1920s. On the bottom shelf are two muscle stimulators dating back from the 1950s. On the left is a beautiful example of a handheld ultraviolet light apparatus. Now on the right, you'll find the violet ray dating from the 1920s. Back then, like nowadays, people were looking for miracle cures. The violet ray was widely available and used to cure a variety of ailments. Its glass wand glowed purple and discharged sparks on the surface of the patient's skin and was used to treat skin diseases such as acne and psoriasis, to ease aging phenomena such as wrinkles, and to act as a tonic for less well-defined conditions such as exhaustion and nervous disorders. In fact, the sparks generated by the device have no physiological effect, and its use is now considered to be an example of quackery. A display like this shows how far we've come in just a few decades and will hopefully encourage our students and faculty to keep innovating and possibly create new methods that will, in the future, make the healthcare technology we use now in physical and occupational therapy seem archaic.